Hi there, and welcome to this video. A few years ago, I needed a portable wireless solution and found this on Amazon. This is a Hutu Tripmate, a very light and portable mini wireless access point. Plug it into your network and connect multiple devices over wireless. Now recently, I was looking for a more up-to-date solution that fits my needs and came up with this. This is a TP-Link AC750 Wi-Fi travel router. We're going to do a quick unboxing and then take a look and see if it fits my needs as a portable media streamer. So we'll open the box and we find our access point. So you have USB for your media or a 3G or 4G uh, dongle, a reset switch, power, your network port, and then your mode select. Some lights on top, presumably to tell you when you have power. Also in the box are details of the access point SSID and also your wireless password. And a couple of bits of paper. We have plug for power, our power cable, and also a network lead. All you need to get started, hopefully. So we'll plug it in and get to the menu and we'll see what options are available. Okay, we've had the access point plugged in now for about a minute. If we go to our available wireless networks, we can see we have a couple of new ones available. These are the ones that are listed on the Wi-Fi info card that comes with the access point. So I'm gonna click on this one. I don't want it to connect automatically. For now, we'll hit connect, and then we have to enter the password. This is also listed on the wireless info card that comes with the access point. Okay, we're connected. So now go to your web browser and the default IP address for the access point is 192.168.0.1. Credentials are username, admin, and password is admin. Hit enter to log in, and you're presented with the initial status screen detailing the firmware version, details regarding the LAN, and also details regarding the uh, wireless settings. So 2.4 gigahertz and also a 5 gigahertz. I'm not going to go into the quick setup right now, but we'll go through the other options that are available. These being operational mode for the access point. So initially access point, range extender, or a client. Details for each mode are listed on the right hand side. Personally, I think I'll be using the access point most of all. Then we can go into network settings. Here you can change the static IP address of the access point to fit your needs. Wireless settings, so you can enable or disable the particular wireless SSID. You can change the SSID, change the mode, channel width, and also the channel number. WPS settings are available along with wireless security, Mac filtering, advanced network settings, statistics, and also a monitor. The same settings are available for the five gigahertz wireless network. You can also set up a guest network by default, that's disabled, but you can have a maximum number of 32 guests connected. You can also disable access between any network clients. You can change your DHCP settings. By default, this is enabled. 
with your range being 192.168.0.100 to 192.168.0.99, sorry, 199. Default gateway and DNS servers are entered automatically, but you do have the option of entering a secondary DNS server. You can also see clients that are connected along with any reservations. USB settings, something that I will probably be using myself. You can set up mass storage devices, user accounts for access to those devices, sharing, an FTP server, and also my favorite, a media server. System tools, time settings, diagnostics, so you can set up a ping or trace route, a ping watchdog to set up a constant ping to an available IP address, firmware upgrades, restore to factory defaults, backup and restore of your configuration, rebooting the access point, and changing the default password, along with the system log as well. Now we're going to take a quick look at the wireless streaming capabilities of this access point. The real reason why I bought it in the first place. I've connected up an eight gig USB drive to the USB port on the access point. I'm going to go into USB settings and mass storage. There you can see the USB stick that I've added with the FAT32 partition. I'm going to go down to media server. It's already enabled. I'm going to add a new folder, hit browse, and from the drop down, select my USB stick. I'll give the share a name, let's call it films. Spell it right, hit apply. There you can see it's added. Now, if I go to VLC, everyone's favorite media player, we're gonna go into view and playlist, or you can hit control and L. Gonna go down to universal plug and play. I'm gonna allow it. There you can see media share. And then films. And there are the films available on the USB stick that are available to my wireless device. Now here you can see we have the access point powered by a power bank. This one is a 22,400 milliamp hour battery. Powers the access point really well. Now, I've been streaming to both of these devices for around the last 12 hours, and we've only used 25% of the battery power. So if you are going away on a holiday, or if you want to stream in the car, it will just last you for ages. It doesn't use much power at all. I hope this video has been useful for you. Let me know in the comments what you think. Bye bye for now.